Russia aims to mobilize 300,000 military by June. Russia plans to mobilize an additional 300,000 servicemen by June the 1st, says President Volodymyr Zelensky at a joint press conference with his Finnish counterpart, Alexander Stubb. As British intelligence reports, Russia recruits about 30,000 new soldiers to its army each month. This allows it to continue the aggressive war against Ukraine. The Russian Defense Ministry has registered an influx of volunteers willing to sign up as contract soldiers this year, with many willing to join the fight against Ukraine after Russian officials suggested Kiev may have been behind the Crocus City Hall terrorist attack. In a statement, the ministry said that more than 100,000 people had signed contracts since the start of 2024, with numbers increasing nationwide. Officials estimate that up to 1,700 volunteers register at recruitment centers each day and that in the past 10 days, some 16,000 Russian citizens have signed contracts. During interviews conducted over the past week, most candidates said their main motive for concluding a contract was a desire to avenge those killed in the tragedy that occurred on March the 22nd, 2024 in the Moscow region, the ministry added. In late December, Putin said that a total of 617,000 service members were present in the zone of the military operation against Ukraine. He noted at the time that out of this number, 244,000 had been mobilized in the autumn of 2022. At the time, Moscow had called up 300,000 people. The Russian president also said that 41,000 had been dismissed for various reasons since then. Putin added that Moscow does not plan to announce a second wave of mobilization as nearly 500,000 troops have current contracts with the defense ministry. Belarus concentrates army on border with Ukraine, Poland and Lithuania. Lukashenko prepares for war. During his trip to Rodno Oblast, Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko again spoke about the war. Don't believe anyone that we want to fight. We are preparing for war. I say this frankly. If you want peace, prepare for war. I'm not the one who invented it. This is very correct, Lukashenko said. According to him, the country is carrying out the necessary training of the relevant units and various types of weapons and equipment are supplied to the troops. It should be noted that the Belarusian military began military drills on April the 2nd near its borders with Poland and Lithuania to the west and Ukraine to the south, the country's defense ministry said. Belarus regularly holds military drills, including close to its borders with Ukraine and the EU. The exercises, which the Defense Ministry said were intended to simulate defense scenarios in the case of martial law being implemented, will be held in the western Rodno Oblast and the southern Homel Oblast, north of the Ukrainian border. Belarus last conducted military exercises in mid-March 2024, holding what it called a comprehensive check of the army's combat readiness. Belarus is Moscow's close ally and has provided extensive support to Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, namely allowing Russian troops to launch their unsuccessful offensive toward Kyiv from its territory in 2022. Despite this, the Belarusian military has not directly participated in Russia's war. In response to the aggressive posturing from Belarus, Latvia and Lithuania agreed in January 2024 to build increased border defenses. Poland also said in November 2023 that it would deploy a tank battalion by the Belarusian border. Iran is starting new operations against the US and Israel. The danger for diplomats is increasing. An important message was sent to the American government as a supporter of the Zionist regime. America must be held responsible. Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian wrote on his account on X. According to the reports from Syria and Iran, the Israeli Air Force attacked a building adjacent to the Iranian embassy in Damascus, where several senior Iranian officials were located. Among them, Mohammad Reza Zahedi, who is actually the deputy commander of the Quds Force of the Revolutionary Guards in Syria and Lebanon. A very senior member of the Iranian hierarchy, he managed the entire operation of smuggling weapons from Syria to Lebanon. He was a very senior person who can be said to have given Israel a lot of headaches in the last 20 years, according to the Jerusalem Post. This is a severe and painful blow to the Iranian regime, a matter in which the Iranians are more inclined to take revenge against Israel, says Hezai Simantov, 
a commentator and correspondent for Arab Affairs of News 13. They are laying the groundwork to strike at Israeli diplomatic representatives worldwide in the Arab world, Europe or the United States or South America, Simantov said. The assassination attributed to Israel certainly makes the confrontation between Iran and Israel more direct rather than indirect as it has been until now in Syria. Israel has very good intelligence about what is happening in Syria and Lebanon, unlike what is happening in the Gaza Strip, even before October the 7th. He added, there is still very good intelligence about these trained members of the Revolutionary Guard and senior Hezbollah figures in Lebanon and Syria. In my estimation, Iran is deterred from direct confrontation with the US. It does not want that. Iran does not want to bring the US into a direct military confrontation. Therefore, this situation in which it is increasingly engaging in terrorism activities in Syria, Lebanon, Yemen and the envelope to pressure Israel, that is something it will continue to do. Direct confrontation with the US or with Israel, that would involve the US, that is not what it wants to do. At least, not at this stage. That could change, Simantov concluded.